Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, here for Sat Chat. <laughs> I know last week I said I wasn't sure if I was going to have one this week or not because I was getting my vaccination, my second vaccination, and I heard that um, the people generally have some side effects, so I had filmed a sketchbook tour to go uh, uh, up when Sat Chat was going to go up, but I think I'm going to post that tomorrow for Sketchbook Sunday because I haven't I haven't recorded my sketchbooks. I've recorded it, but I haven't voiced it over, so I think that I'm just going to put that tomorrow. Um, but I'm feeling all right. I'm tired. Um, I had my vaccination yesterday at 10.20 in the morning. It is 1.53 Friday afternoon, and if I look tired, it's because I am. Oh, man. I um, actually didn't have any side effects all day, I and a couple of you guys said that you actually had boosts of energy after your second vaccine, so I'm like, well, that's the side effect I want. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on being energetic, and that will be the side effect that I get. So I was going to do the whole hippie manifesting type thing. Um, and it was fine. I uh, had a little walk in the evening, um, sat around the campfire for a while, uh, did a little shopping after my shot because I was in town, and um, I felt fine. I mean, my arm was sore. And I went to bed early, about 9.30, and I made sure that to drink a lot of water because the lady that did the vaccination, she said that, you know, just hydrate a lot. You'll probably have more side effects. Um, with the second one than the first. I was just tired after the first one. And um, and so I was drinking all kinds of water and herbal tea. I'm not a huge water drinker, so I just had to like make sure that I did. And I took um, some Tylenol, because she said to take Tylenol. So I took some Tylenol before I went to bed, and I went to bed around 9.30, and I woke up at 1.30. And I don't know if I was awake from 1.30 to 5.30, but it was one of those, those nights where I... Have you ever done this? Like, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you look at the clock, and then you're like, okay, if I'm still, if I'm still awake, like it was 1.30, if I'm still awake at 2 o'clock, I'm going to get up. And I look, it's 2 o'clock. Okay, if I'm still awake at 2.30, I'm going to get up. Because I was like really achy and I didn't really want to move and I was just really wiped out. Um, so finally, after playing that every half hour, I'm going to get up game at 5.30. I'm like, man, I just got to get up. So I got up and I lay down on the couch, which I could like adjust the pillow. So I was kind of like reclining back with like pillows under my knees and pillows by my back. And I had a, a heating pad and I was out like a light for like an hour. So I felt a lot better after that. Um, but mainly it's just been like, uh, just been tired and achy. Uh, but I did manage to do the full walk with the dog this morning. It was beautiful out. It was like not a cloud in the sky. 65 degrees, like I had a t-shirt on with no sweatshirt. I was just like so comfortable. It was beautiful. I'm actually thinking I'm going to go outside, maybe read a magazine or something after I film this, take the rest of the day off. I might go down to the library too and see uh, see if the librarian can recommend a good book because I, I haven't really been able to get into a book for quite a long time. The last books I really got into were the Wayward Pines ones. Um, that I got for Christmas. Oh, by the way, this is Sat Chat. If you're new here, this is not a tutorial. <laughs> I feel like I need to put that disclaimer in every video. How long? Oh, we're like three minutes in. Oh, that's not too bad. I got it pretty close to the beginning of the video. So, um, so yeah, so I'm here. I'm here, guys. I was thinking about skipping it, but I'm like, oh, I really, I really would miss the interaction on Saturday. I love like chatting in the comments below. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to give that up. I, I'll really regret it tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, and you know, I don't feel that bad. I actually did some swatching today. Uh, I swatched out the Pro Color pencils that uh, were sent to me by Derwent. I'll be doing a tutorial and review of those. Um, they remind me of these pencils that were out, I would say, probably like 20 years ago called Signature, and there's like nothing about them online. You can't find any information about them. I really like those pencils. They were very pigmented, they were very light fast, but they were really hard, and a lot of uh, a lot of people didn't like how hard they were, but um, those remind me of the signatures. So I think that might have been a very similar formulation, but I'm gonna have to use them side by side because I have a hoard of them. Not a hoard of them. I have I have some open stock ones, but um, but I'm definitely gonna put those side by side. I did that magnolia that I did in a um, uh, that I did in a uh, gosh word sketchbook Sunday <laughs> uh, a couple months ago with the signature ones on the pastel mat, and I think. I think I'm really going to enjoy those on like pastel mat or a sanded paper or something like that. So that's what I'm going to be playing with over, I don't know, it'll be a while before that review's up. I'm out probably about four or five weeks on reviews. And on Monday, I have a really fun review collaboration with artist Jane Bush. We're going to, we've swapped pencils and we're going to review, um, we're reviewing pencils that we sent each other. So that's going to be really fun. I've, I've seen her video. She's seen mine. So we're going to publish them at noon on Monday. So you can check that out if you like product reviews and just, you know, fun times, <laughs> I guess. Um, so man, this week, this week, if I wasn't tired from the vaccine, I would be tired from this week. I'm sorry if I am super low energy. Man, it is, I am just super low energy today. Um, so, 
<sighs> okay, SATs last week, they went great. I know I was chatting with you guys while I was like down there in a Farmington while my girls were taking their SATs. There was no issue with Lila using the passport to get into the test because she doesn't have her driver's license yet. Um, but her test was scheduled for this week. And um, bad on me for not looking over the paperwork because it was dressed to her. She took it. She's like, oh, my test is, is Thursday at 2 p.m. I bet I have the same instructor that's, you know, that I haven't passed the last couple times with. And she was very upset about that. Um, but I'm like, oh, well, Thursday's my vaccination day. So Jason was gonna take her to the um, to the driving test and uh, because I didn't know what time I'd be back or how I'd be feeling. And um, and so I actually got back before they left. I went and wiped down the car because it was the girls use, uh, use the van now and that was what she was gonna take her test on. And um, and um, I know they were busy in school, they had online school, so I was just trying to tidy it up for them so that the instructor didn't have to sit in a you know dirty teenage van. And um, so we come in and Lila's got all her paperwork, they're getting ready to leave and Jason looks at it and he goes, Lila, this test is for tomorrow, not today, which wouldn't be a big deal, except for the fact that the girls have a double header softball game in Caribou, which is like three hours north, because like everything is so far away and maybe and SAT's two hours southwest, we have baseball game three hours north, so they're up there all day. They won't get home until um until tonight, like late tonight. So um so I'm like, well, maybe, maybe there was a cancellation. So I called the, uh, I called the DMV, the local branch. And just like, I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ask. I asked if there was any chance it was like a cancellation and my daughter could take her test today. Well, this was yesterday rather than her scheduled time because she was going to be out of town in a softball game and we, and, um, we got her dates mixed up and, um, she said they don't do same day testing and that was impossible, but they routed me to the, um, the DMV in Augusta, Secretaries of State's office, and they just rescheduled us. So um, they were very nice, very helpful. It's not like they were, they were, it made the best of a, of a bad situation. She was very upset, but um, she got over it pretty quickly and it'll just be more practice time. I don't really think she needs more practice time. Jason thinks she might actually be kind of psyching herself up because she's getting too much practice time. She just needs to, you know, get her license. And, um, but uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of like, I'm gonna stay with my hippie juju right now and say it's happening for a reason. Maybe there's a reason that her license is being delayed so it can avoid something else awful. I don't know. You, I, I don't know. I always wonder about that. I'm kind of superstitious. Um, I'm very, I'm very, I'm a very practical, serious person, honestly, which might come as a surprise, but I'm also very superstitious about things like that. Like if I get a bad feeling before I'm supposed to drive somewhere, I often won't go. Um, so maybe it's, I mean, it's probably, it's probably over. I'm probably overly superstitious, but, um, yeah, I definitely, if I get a bad feeling about something that I'm like not doing it, you know, I just, um, I'm just like that. So, uh, so there's that saga. We, they're going to send us a new date for her test and I'm not sure if they're going to charge us for another, for, for a new test or if the, what we paid for that one that we didn't get to take, we'll just roll over, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, small in the grand scheme of things. And, um, oh, the other, the other major, it's like anxiety whack-a-mole. I'm telling you, parenting teenagers, uh, or just parenting in general. Um, so my son has been in quarantine for the past 10 days. He actually 11 days, he was a close contact. There was a girl in his one of his classes that tested positive for COVID-19. Now he's had both of his vaccines, but it hasn't been two weeks since his last one. And um, so we got a call like the day after, this was like 10, 10 days ago, saying that he had to be in quarantine for 10 days because he was in a classroom with this girl that tested positive. Um, and so that meant he wouldn't be able to go to prom because like the last day of his quarantine was prom day. And I was like, oh, come on. They, they missed their prom last year. They missed like every fun thing. All it has been is just drudgery, like for these high school kids, these seniors. And it's like, really? And so I started to do research and the federal CDC guidelines is that if someone can have, is, has had a close contact, but they don't have symptoms and they get a negative test that their quarantine can be reduced to seven days. And then I also did some research on the Pfizer vaccine that said that 15 days after their first dose, they have 85 to 91% immunity. And time-wise, they count they counted the first day as day zero and not day one, but it was like first thing in the morning, we had close contact with that person. And the problem is last thing in the evening. So it's like, wouldn't that full, there'd be more than a buffer of 10 days between when he was exposed to when um, prom was going to be. So I emailed the school nurse and, um, and I kind of laid it all out there and he's had both of his shots. Um, and he actually, he actually had a negative, he took a test um, 
like uh, four days after contact just to see because his girlfriend was with him when she, he got the phone call saying that he'd been in close contact with a COVID person and um, or somebody who tested positive for COVID. And so um, he wanted to get tested because she wanted to visit her grandmother and, you know, she wanted to make sure that he didn't have it. I knew the chances would be very slim because they were masked and, you know, it was in a classroom. But um, so it came out negative, so that was great. And then he had his test today. Oh, so the nurse, um, the nurse said, well, I, she contacted the Department of Education and her COVID liaison, and um, and they actually said, yeah, if he gets a, a negative test on the day of prom, that they can go. So there were other kids affected too. So hopefully, um, uh, so hopefully they all did that, so they can go. But. <laughs> another twist, because now I've learned my lesson about not checking, not double checking things. So. Um, after uh, after I had, because the nurse had just emailed me a screenshot of the test, so I, I had done that, and I, I'm like, I just want to make sure that everything got there. Um, so I called up the front desk, uh, I called the school, and just to make sure that the nurse got the uh, the screenshot, make sure they got the um, the note that, because he wasn't in school today because he had to get that test, and just want to make sure that that was an excused absence, so he could go to prom, because if you skip school or you miss school on, like, you know, prom day, you're not allowed to go. Um, so I just want to make sure everything was, you know, all set because we're following the rules. We're doing what the nurse says that is okay to do. And the nurse is on, is off today. She's not there. And she just called me yesterday to make sure that I had scheduled the test and was going to be, be able to send her a screenshot. And, um, and so I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I'm like, can I send you a screenshot at the front desk? So that's what I did. And then they called me back. They had talked to whoever was in charge with the nurse away. And they said, that's totally fine. But I told Jackson, make sure you have that on your phone, that screenshot of your negative test. So there's not going to be any problems. So... Oh, this is some high-level parenting, guys. Oh my gosh, look at this. 11 minutes and we have not even talked about anything crafty. Well, I guess we kind of have. We've talked about pencils and reviews. But man, oh man, I've been, it's, that's been like, that has been like consuming all of my mental bandwidth. That's, I've been like, oh, oh I felt so bad. I felt so bad that I didn't check her driver's license paperwork. Cause I mean, my kids are good. They're really on top of things. But I mean, it's just, it's so easy to, get a date wrong and it's so it's so easy to get wrapped up in one like focused on one thing like I was so worried about the SAT like because I'm like I'm gonna drive them so nobody's stranded not able to take a test you know I was so worried about that that I think I stopped worrying about everything else except I was also worrying about the prom thing but um it's I this has been such a weird year that I don't want I don't want anybody to miss out on anything unnecessarily basically so um I mean I don't I would never ever want, you know, somebody, one of my kids to put somebody else at risk if I thought there was a chance, you know, but, um, but there isn't. And, you know, uh, science, yay science, right? Um, yeah, so yesterday after my vaccine, oh, oh my goodness. So I don't typically go to Walmart, but that's where my vaccine was scheduled. And I had never been into the big Walmart because we have a smaller one. It's a super center, but smaller, um, nearer to where I live. And, um, then there's this really big one in Bangor that's like a mall practically, it's humongous. And that's where the vaccine was. And um, and I'd never been in there before and it was just kind of really huge and overwhelming, but um, I didn't have any place I had to be right after the vaccine. So I'm like, I really want to have some perfume because I haven't worn perfume in so long. And um, I just think it'd be a nice little pick me up, you know, cause everything is just so, you know, you're, I don't really love wearing makeup, but it's like, even if I did, you know, you got a mask on and which I guess you don't have to if you're, if you're fully vaccinated. I just got vaccinated. So I guess I would have to for a couple more weeks until the vaccine fully kicked in. But, um, but that's, that was just, uh, I think said yesterday, that was like, a maybe the day before it was the big news out of the white house that you don't have to wear a mask if you're fully vaccinated indoors or outdoors. But, um, but anyway, um, I don't know. I like, uh, I like perfume. I always enjoyed wearing perfume when I was younger. And like every time, like my daughter, one of my daughters walks by with perfume, I'm like, Oh, I should buy some perfume. That smells so good. Um, so I'm like, I'm going to check out the fragrance section at Walmart because I'm not fancy. I just want something that smells good. And I found, and I'm going to show you the box. The perfume bottle is actually upstairs. So I put it in my medicine cabinet, but, um, it's called love and nature. And I got coconut vanilla orchid. And this smells like sunscreen and cupcakes. It is the, like the perfect smell. It's like vanilla frosting and suntan, well, suntan oil. I love it. It's like, it's like my perfect scent. And these are vegan, cruelty-free. Um, oh, I cannot read the other small word. It does, uh, doesn't contain some, I don't know. It's got a recycled box. Guys, it's no joke. Mid forties, your eyes, your eyeballs stop <laughs> reading tiny print. 
<laughs> unless you've got your glasses on. Um, but it smells really good. They actually had, a, had like four or five different of these like vegan fragrances and um, and honestly, I'm kind of like, if I like something, I'm going to stop at the first thing I like and that's going to be good enough. You know, I'm not going to like, especially with perfume, you smell too many smells and you can't tell what you've smelled. You know what I mean? Then you could come home with completely wrong thing. So it's like the first one that smells good that I'm going to like, that's what I'm going to go with. Same thing with pattern paper when I'm making a card. I'm going to go with the first pattern paper that's going to work because otherwise you can spend all day just looking at your pattern paper. Um, but anyway, I got perfume now and uh, I don't know if it, I, I can still smell it. It's not overly strong. Uh, it's nice. You know, it's, $8 perfume. It's not like it's going to be overpowering and last all day or anything, but it, um, but I think it does all right. I mean, I don't want to, to, oh yeah, it still smells. Um, I don't want perfume that's too overpowering because, and that's another thing. It's, um, like when the kids are in school, like in grade school, when I used to go volunteer, there were always signs up everywhere saying, do not wear fragrances, uh, because some people are very, they're very uh, bothered by that, but I work at home. I can wear, I can smell however I want to smell. Too bad this doesn't have like smell of vision because you just smell like beautiful perfume um, if you wanted to. Uh, so, but since I work at home, I can wear perfume. And everyone stands six feet apart, so I can still wear perfume and enjoy it myself because I think perfume is something you do for yourself, you know? It's something that you like. I don't care for uh, heavily floral scents or like musky scents. I like the, I like smells that are like, um, that are like vanilla, you know, I like those. Uh, do you remember exclamation? Was it exclamation or baby soft? I think it was exclamation, like back in the 90s. I love that. <laughs> I loved that, uh, that perfume. So uh, I actually also roamed around Joann's. I hadn't been in there. That was right down the road from Walmart. And um, oh, so by the way, I'm just kind of like, I've decided that this is not the time of life for me to be super duper restrictive in my diet or in my, in my shopping, because I have a feeling it'll go off the rails if uh, if I don't and, um, or if I do, whatever. Um, so I did pick up a couple things at Joann's. Not, not a lot. I mean, it's not really a, not really a haul. Um, I, oh, I noticed a trend because I was in like the paper section and I noticed a couple like Zodiac and Celestial, um, themed papers. And then I was in like the craft section and I noticed uh, Zodiac and Celestial sequins. And so, and then there was two people in the store that had Celestial masks on. So I think that's gonna be a trend. So keep your eyes out for that. If you're like me, you have old personal stamp exchange, beautiful Celestial stamps back from the from back in the day, like, I don't know, 2000 <laughs> or something. Um, and that seems to be like that style, that kind of vintage Celestial that was like really popular in the late 90s. Um, anyway, it's just something I noticed. I thought I would just kind of put that bug in your ear in case you're kind of thinking, hmm, I want to make something. What shall I, what shall I theme it? But I saw these, um, these sequins and they are shells and sand dollars and uh, mermaid tails. And I just thought that color palette was really interesting. It's very soft, like soft kind of pastel. And I was um, labeling, oh, this is something I'd like your opinion on. I was going through the, the, the storage room, the old craft room, and I was thinking I need to label stuff because it's taking me too long to find things. And also my stamp binders are labeled, but I used blue cardstock on the blue binders because I didn't want labels to be jumping out at me back when I first did it. But it's very difficult for me to identify what the binders are quickly. Cause a lot of times I'm going in there, I'm just turning on one light. I don't have all my lights on and I'm just kind of like, it's hard for me to see what each binder is. So I put white labels on with black writing and I've been filming like these little updates. Um, is that something you guys are interested in? Cause I don't know, it seems kind of like a tedious project and I don't know if anyone would actually be interested in this like, like a uh, slight, update over there but if you are let me know and then I can certainly post it because I've been feel, filming my boring life over there as I do this I'm just like why did I start this I put labels on all my drawers like chalkboard labels I don't like chalkboard markers they get so frayed so quickly and my penmanship is awful I should get a uh, one of those label makers but uh, it just seems way too way too much for me way too organized <laughs> I'd probably lose it or the batteries would be dead or something when I needed to use it I'm just not like I'm organized, but I'm not like a pretty organized. I'm, I'm a like utilitarian. <laughs> my, my storage area over there looks like necessity. <laughs> it's not pretty, but, uh, but it works and I can find my stuff, but I do need, since I'm not in there working every day, I go in there every day to grab stuff to bring over here to film. Um, it takes me sometimes a couple drawers to get the right drawer that's got the thing in it that I need, or uh, it takes me a few minutes to read all the binders to find the stamps that I need because the, it's like black ink on a dark blue cardstock on a dark blue binder. It's hard, you know, it's just hard. It takes, takes more time. I know it's only seconds, but, um, 
Uh, but you know that those seconds add up. So um, I'll show you what else I got at Joann's. It wasn't a lot. I got this rainbow grow grain ribbon. I just thought it was really unique and nifty and it just I love I love wide rainbows and I think I don't know if this will be stiff enough for a belt but this might be just the thing to like update some just plain like dark navy or black dresses I have. I don't know maybe I'll just as an embellishment on a card or scrap a page. I'm not sure but I thought it was really cute. Um, I don't know, it was near the sewing section, so I'm assuming it's a sewing, you could sew with it. I don't see why not, it doesn't have wire in it or anything, I don't think. Well, it's not wire edge, so I think I could sew with it. Um, I picked up this pad of paper. Um, I'm pretty picky about paper because I know I tend to like gel print and stuff, but this was a uh, Vicky Booten paper, I think the Storyteller line. Oh, I should have, uh, well, I'll just try to do that. Oh, this is awful. I need to get this over here. Um, and by the way, I've noticed that like American Crafts just like owns everything. Um, I had like, I was looking at some paper there and I'm like, I had that paper and it said it was by Bo Bunny, but I bought it for like $5 from Park Lane uh, back in December at Joann's, the Park Lane, which is Joann's brand. And it was all the same patterns. I got a 12 by 12 for like five bucks. It was a crazy deal. And, um, and I've used it on quite a few projects and it was all vintage stuff. And this was a small hat like this, and it was um, like $6.99, and it was by Bow Bunny. And so I look at it, and it says American Crafts on it. And um, I'm like, does American Crafts own everything now? And then I looked at the other Park Lane stuff from Joann's. I'm just going to do this so you can kind of see. Well, uh, And all the other Park Lane stuff now says uh, American Crafts on it. And the, uh, the pad that I got back in uh, December does not say American Crafts on it. So they must own, I think they own all of the house brands. I would not be surprised if American Craft makes all, aren't those journaling tags great? Those are gonna be so cute on a card. Um, I think they make all of the house brand stuff too. It's like they own everything. And it seems like all the stamps are from American's Cra American Crafts or another division of, or one of the companies that American Crafts bought. I'm not sure if Hampton Arts is owned by American Crafts. I don't think it is. So it's either American Crafts or Hampton Art or Hero Arts. And I did notice Hero Arts collaborating with a bunch of other brands like GNK and Altenew and selling those stamps at Joann. So I thought that was kind of neat because I think most crafters get their start at least by buying stamps and things at the big box stores. So if they can get exposed to some of those smaller companies that offer really unique stuff, I think that's a, um, I think that's a really good thing. And it kind of gives some exposure to those smaller brands. So it's nice to see these companies collaborating, but it's kind of weird to see that like American Crafts owns everything. <laughs> I mean, they've been buying up stuff for the last 10 years. They've been buying up little companies for the last 10 years, but it's like, wow. Well, I guess if you have that kind of buying power and that sort of like production power, then you can more than fill all those stores and you can do it cheaply because because you know you're kind of the you've got all the purchasing power for all those factories and stuff but I was like wow Park Lane is American Crafts well, they need to up their cardstock game their colored cardstock at least the Park Lane colored card cardstock I got that I've been like desperately trying to use up because it's the printing on it is so bad I'm just using it for card bases it's nice and thick so it's fine for that but like they'll be like uh like lines and stuff it's just it's just not um uniform I'm not happy with it but it's fine for card base you're just seeing like a little edge and then I grabbed this for a dollar fifty. It's uh, I think it's like a bullet journal stamp, but it's got day, it's got months, and it's got days, and uh, months, days, and numbers. So I think that would be cute for like well for scrapbooking, but also I just think it'd be a nice little texture. Or like if you had a birthday, you could circle the month, day, and date, and um, or even just the month and date or something. That would be a cute little accent if you're making a custom birthday card for somebody. Just a little extra touch and I like to like layer up stamps on top of like vintage ephemera. I just think it like kind of gives it almost like that postage or postmarked look. It's just uh, just another way to customize it. And I got some of my favorite gum because I went to the Dollar Tree actually and I got some big red gum. I like cinnamon gum. Um, what I was looking for at Dollar Tree and I did not find was a Lazy Susan. I thought they had little Lazy Susans and I have a bunch of these containers. I want to make a, um, these were like uh, some sort of health food supplement thing. My son had saved a bunch of them and he asked me if I wanted them and I'm like, geez, how, there's uh, like seven of them. And I thought this, if I put those around in a Lazy Susan, kind of like one in the center and then like go around and maybe like put one up, the one in the middle up like on its lid so that it's up higher, that would be really nice for putting out the colored pencils. Like if I'm using say the Pro Color set, I could put all those pencils out and just have them up in jars and it would be a little easier to see them than in tins and take up less space. So I thought it'd be kind of neat for like a, um, uh, kind of keep the, the supplies you're using at the moment organized. Um, 
I just thought lazy, I don't need a lazy Susan. I thought it might be kind of nice, but I guess I could just take like a, a lid, any sort of like, um, like recycled lid that's big enough and glue them to that and that would be fine. So it's not like I would need to spin them, especially if I didn't rise the second one up, if I left them all flush to the bottom, that would be fine. So that's something I'm thinking about doing. Oh, then again, it's a pretty like pedestrian craft. Probably everybody has done that with something like, um, paper towel rolls or, or something. Then we get to use pill bottles up too. That'd be a great way to use up those pill bottles. Cause I don't think you can recycle those. Um, you know, like the orange and, and blue plastic bottles. If you get a prescription medication, they come in. Um, cause some people have a lot of those because they had, they regularly have to take prescriptions. And I've had a lot of people ask me, what can I do? What can I craft with those? And it's like, I never know because I'm other than like making little first aid, portable first aid kits or hide keys. I'm like, I don't know, but I think something like that would be good. Cause then you could spray paint it and make it look uniform. Oh, I should probably refer to my notes here. <laughs> now that we're nearing the end. Um, I think, Oh, did I talk about everything? I think I did. I think I did. Oh, so the cat, the cat painting went up on Thursday. So that's up the little kitty cat up there, the spools. That's going to be a sketchbook Sunday coming up. I don't know, probably in a couple weeks. That's also part of the Holbein review, which is coming up on Monday. So that'll be, that's been a long time coming. I've been whittling away at the, um, at the stuff that I've had to review the stuff I've been collecting to review and I'm making a dent. I still haven't used my round stencils yet. There's so many things I want to use and so many things I want to do, but like having the time and energy is like a whole other thing. I haven't been able to jive those two things up. Uh, I think that's why I've been like feeling like I want to organize something. I organized my wrapping paper. I had it all like crammed into this old little dresser that was like when the kids were little, this little tiny dresser. I had all my wrapping paper in there. It was a mess. It was really difficult to find anything. So I put it over in the uh, crafty storage area so I could actually get to everything and then have the big table to wrap on. And, um, oh, also I dropped my old Kenmore sewing machine. So I had to fix it. Oh my gosh. I had to take that thing apart. I cleaned, oiled everything. And it was like, I was turning dials, trying to figure out what the, the feed dogs weren't oscillating. So I don't know what, I think something it was caught. I think something was caught up on something else. Cause eventually they started going again. I don't know what, but I thought maybe I snapped a spring or a wire or something. Cause that thing's a beast. It's all metal. It's heavy. Um, but it's working now. So that's good. Cause I want to leave that sewing machine up and then it would just be easy to sit down and sew something in there when I need to. It's not great to sew in here because that t my door table in here is too bouncy. The door table in there has uh, like shelves on it and stuff. So it's like really firm and doesn't bounce around when I sew. Cause a sewing machine kind of like, it's like a jackhammer kind of, it just kind of not only like a jackhammer, but you know, it vibrates and then like it will bounce if you have like a hollow lightweight tabletop. Um, too much information probably. I don't know if anyone's gonna understand what I'm talking about, but is that it? I don't know. Man, I am tired. I think that I am going, I don't know if I'll take a nap. I probably won't take a nap cause I'm not a napper, but I think I will go, uh, go sit outside in the sun and read a magazine or go sit outside in the shade. I don't know. Uh, I figured, well, I've got, I've got sunscreen moisturizer on and I have makeup on today because I'm filming sat chat. So I've got some good sun, sun protection going on. So yeah, might be a good idea. And I'm going to have to make sure I get a picture of my kid in his tuxedo. That is so exciting. I can't wait to see him all dressed up for prom. He's got a couple photo shoots that he's doing with his friends. So uh, look forward to all of those pictures, but I want to make sure I get a picture too. He's such a little turd. He doesn't want me to take his picture. He hates that, but it's like, you're dressed up in a tuxedo. Oh my gosh. I can't stand it. Um, but that's it for this week. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you are doing well and you're healthy and you're taking care of one another. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.